Greetings and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at a very interesting case study in differential equations where we're trying to find a function or functions such that the second derivative equals the inverse function. And this is a spin on a previous video I made on the first derivative being equal to the inverse and like that video this solution development is going to be really cool. So the first thing we can do is take a guess at the structure of the function that would satisfy such a differential equation and that is pretty easy to make. We could take f here to be a power function, alpha times x to the beta, where alpha and beta could be complex numbers. And the reason for that is, well, we have the second derivative, and the derivative of a power function and its derivative are both power functions as well. And the inverse of a power function is also a power function. Okay, cool. So now it's time to solve for the actual values of alpha and beta to get the type of functions that would satisfy this differential equation. So first things first, we need the second derivative. So we have f prime of x equal to alpha times beta times x to the beta minus one. And we have f double prime equal to alpha times beta times beta minus one times x to the beta minus two. And now for the inverse function, we're gonna call f of x here y. So we have y equal to alpha times x to the beta. And solving for x here gives us y by x, no, sorry about that, y by alpha, to the one by beta equal to x, which implies that f inverse of x equals x divided by alpha to the one by beta, which can be written as alpha to the negative one by beta times x to the one by beta. Okay, cool. So we have both of these functions and our goal is to solve the equation f double prime equals f inverse. So that means we just need to equate these two forms. So we have alpha times beta times beta minus one times x to the beta minus two equal to alpha to the negative one by beta times x to the one by beta. And now we can just equate the coefficients and the exponents on both sides of the equation. To get, us a couple, to get us a couple of equations we can work with. So first up for the coefficients, we have alpha times beta times beta minus one equal to alpha to the negative one by beta. So we can expand using one by alpha, which gives us beta times beta minus one equal to alpha to the negative one minus one by beta, which of course could be simplified as the negative one being factored out. So we have one plus one by beta in the parentheses. So I'm just gonna leave this equation in this form for, equa for reasons that will, that will become apparent later. Now for the exponents, we have beta minus two here equal to one by beta. So we can expand using beta and get beta squared minus two beta equal to one or beta squared minus two beta minus one equal to zero. And we can just solve this using the quadratic formula. So we have beta equal to two plus or minus two squared is four minus four times one times negative one, which is of course negative four. So we have four plus four and that would be eight and square root eight is in fact two times root two. So we have beta here equal to one plus or minus root two, which is pretty cool. So we have two possible values of the beta parameter, hence two possible values of the alpha parameter, which we will now work out. Recall that I just left the equation in this form. So let me just take it, let me just copy it down here. And let me work a bit with this equation that I'm now gonna label as equation two. So from equation two, we have beta squared minus two, beta, minus two times beta equal to one. And we can expand this as beta squared minus beta minus beta equal to one, which means that we have beta times beta minus one equal to one plus beta, which is slightly nicer to work with. So we can make use of it in this equation up here. So we have alpha to the negative one plus one by beta equal to one plus beta, which implies that alpha to the one plus one by beta equals one over one plus beta. And of course, 
that implies that alpha here equals 1 over 1 plus beta to the 1 plus 1 over beta. Okay, cool. Now, if it, no, wait, that is not it. That is definitely not it. In fact, that is the cause of a re-upload. The left-hand side can be written as alpha to the beta plus 1 divided by beta equal to 1 over 1 plus beta. So that means we have alpha equal to 1 over 1 plus beta to the beta divided by 1 plus beta, which is pretty cool. And now we can extract the values of alpha corresponding to the two values of the beta parameter. First up, if we have the case of beta equal to 1 plus root 2, then what would beta divided by 1 plus beta be? That would give us 1 plus root 2 divided by 2 plus root 2, and we can expand using the conjugate, giving us 2 minus root 2 plus 2 times root 2 minus 2. Okay, cool. So we have some nice cancellation taking place. And downstairs we have 4 minus 2, so all of that results in, well, root 2 up top and then 2 downstairs, which looks pretty nice. And that means alpha in this case would be, well, alpha was, oh yeah, 1 over 1 plus beta. So that's 2 plus root 2, terribly sorry about that, to the value of beta divided by 1 plus beta. So that would be root 2 divided by 2. And now what about the other value of alpha corresponding to, well, beta equal to 1 minus root 2. In that case, we have beta divided by 1 plus beta equal to 1 minus root 2 divided by 2 minus root 2. Again, we expand using the conjugate. So we have 2 plus root 2 here, 2 plus root 2 down there. That looks a bit awkward much better now and again my great struggle with arithmetic continues so we have 2 plus root 2 can't mess this up minus 2 times root 2 minus 2 again we have that cancellation this looks good man this this this, this looks really good then we got 4 minus 2 so that means we have negative root 2 by 2 isn't that extremely cool and yet yeah, it looks like i haven't messed up the arithmetic yet emphasis on yet. So in this context, alpha would be equal to 1 over 1 plus beta, so that's 2 minus root 2 again, to this value here, which is negative root 2 by 2. And this thing looks actually pretty cool, 2 minus root 2 to the root 2 by 2. So the values of beta were quite rootful and the values of alpha were quite rootful too. That was a horrible dad joke, I know. And now it's time to compile the results. So we have our alphas and we have our betas and it turns out there is a cousin of the golden ratio called silver ratio, which is exactly this number. So if you want, you could express the results in the form of this delta. But these results actually look pretty dope. So I'm just gonna stick with them. First up, we have f of x equal to alpha, which is 1 over 2 plus root 2 to the root 2 by 2 times x to the beta, and x to the beta would be 1, x to the 1 plus root 2. Okay, cool. And finally, we have f of x equal to, uh, again, alpha being 2 minus root 2 to the root 2 by 2 times x to the 1 minus root 2, which again looks extremely dope. This looks awesome. In fact, I, I kind of like these results. They're quite rootful indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. I hope you learned something from the video. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. Thank you. See you next time.